Now, welcome to another inspiring edition of Sound Insight with Dr. Tom Curran. Love is an open door. <laughs> You're seriously going to sing? Carrie, come on. <laughs> that was pretty good. I, I got many gifts. Music isn't one of them. That gift got left behind. It got put on layaway. In well, heaven, be, be, I will sing. In heaven, I will be able to sing beautifully. Jesus is going to smile at my singing, dear. You, on the other hand, you just shake your head. You got a smile on your face, but you're shaking your head. Why did I sing that? Well, there's a lot to say, and it involves two of our kids and how God has an open door for you and your family this summer. We'll talk about it today on Sound Insight. Well, welcome back to Sound Insight. Hey, Carrie. Hi, Tom. Let's start with a prayer. I have my wife, Carrie, with me today. On Fridays, we talk about faith and family and fun sometimes. Well, we'll talk a bit about summer. It's I should sing in summer. <laughs> At least hey. you can carry a tune. Hey, this I can? Yes, you are. I carry on... it right out the door. No, you do actually stay on key. So you got that going for you. Okay, good. A very low key. All right, I'm going <laughs> to so stop low, with the... I can't. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So low, you can't hear uh, yes, we're going to focus in on uh, summertime and how the summer is a wonderful opportunity, or it can be. But I know for many parents who have kids and maybe a number of kids at home during the summer, it can be a big challenge. So, Carrie, I'm going to ask you some questions about how you approach the summer and how you gently invite me to consider joining you in... That was a joke. <laughs> I know that was. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I missed my cue. <laughs> you missed cue. But uh, we're how you're very good just with your teacher background about helping us be intentional. That's my word about helping our kids have a great summer. So we'll talk about things like vacations and, and activities and sports and the different dimensions of having a great summer. Before we do that, let's pray in the name the of the Father, Father and the, the Son and, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, good and gracious God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, and we ask that you would bless us, bless this program, bless all those who are listening. Jesus, have mercy on us. Give us the gift of gratitude. Give us grateful hearts, O oh God. Give us grateful hearts for all of your blessings. And Lord, for those things in our lives that we don't recognize as blessings. And Lord, we repent for the ways that we settle for anything less than your very best. And I know I do that. I know we do that. Lord, I just beg you to draw us into your very best. And I know your very best means the cross and the cross leading to resurrection. Please, oh Lord, help us not to settle for less than the resurrection coming to us through the cross. And in a month dedicated to our blessed mother, Lord, we ask and we pray uh, all of these things through your son, Jesus, but we place our lives, this program, our family, the families of all those who are listening into your hands, O Mother Mary, and present us to your son. As together we pray, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women and, and blessed is the fruit, fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. In, in the, the name of the Father, Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, Carrie, I, I feel like I want to start with uh, family prayer. You know, even as I'm praying, I, I, honestly, I'm getting stirred. Uh, I don't know what it is, but something is saying begin with family prayer. Great. Okay. That sounds great. So we're diving in. This is living discernment of the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> we're flying by the seat of the Holy Spirit. So that's our goal anyways. And we talked with our kids uh, a few days ago and a couple of days ago, and we said, it's the month of May dedicated in a special way to our blessed mother. And so what is that going to mean for our family prayer time? Praying the rosary every night. Praying the rosary. So we have to move away from divine mercy. Yeah. Sorry, kids. Or, or petitions or just saying the prayers or the other different forms that they negotiate for. And ordinarily, I'd say we probably play the rosary uh, um, in, in the other prayers that we pray in our family prayer about once a week. And so... To move towards uh, an every day for the month of May, we are praying the rosary. You know, there's a little bit of resistance, a little bit of hesitancy in you. you know, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dear. Yeah. Well, you actually lead us into prayer quite well. So it makes up for a great, you know, foundation. Um, no, the kids do resist. And with acti we just started up spring sports so they're busy running around doing those different activities. And then the homework. Didn't you count up the number of rides? I don't even want to mention no, it. No, say it out loud. It's, it's actually kind of funny. 
<laughs> so we have is it seven kids in sports right now in multiple sports and, and what did you add up the number of like destination drop offs or or I added up how many people have to be at different places during the week, Monday through Friday, and it's thirty seven practices. But <laughs> six, <laughs> I know. But six of them are at track together and six of them are at the swimming pool swimming together so that's an easy drop off that's okay, everyone so that in the counts car for six that doesn't count for one yeah that's six and six is 12 and you do I that see. four times a week so that's what's for 24 so you can see how it's you know doesn't sound that bad but it's a lot in We've just started doing this because we hadn't been doing much of anything for a while, and we were just gearing up for summer and different activities, and I, I made it work. But dinners are not what they used to be because I do not spend time cooking dinners. Instead, we're doing activities. And then in the evening, because they're at sports, the prayer time will get crowded out, or the or homework gets or, you know less yep. time and attention to homework. The chores you know the house is a little bit more messier when you walk when you come in at night amen sister <laughs> like a bomb yes. went off. Yeah. so it's but it's just for a time i said i can do this for six weeks and i'm done i think it's actually five weeks and then i'm done so, so what this brought up it, it brought it up last week in two different instances one of them i was with our two oldest kids and i was saying when we get home we're going to pray and you would have thought, oh, you know, it's like I'd stuck a needle in their ear. Well, right? I think we, I mean, I think you've said this before on the radio. That right, this that is a typical and resist, but, response. So, but what yeah. I responded to them was very different. Uh, they were looking at the concept of family prayer as some kind of over the wall, here it comes. This is some additional activity that they weren't thinking about. They weren't planning about. It's being... It's like some interruption that is happening in their evening that they've never have had happen before. Yeah, or like, wow, this is this is strange to me. And I, I was I was a little bit taken aback. I liked what you said because I was in the kitchen. I'm not sure exactly what I was doing, maybe getting a cup of coffee. But when you started telling them what to expect, I thought, go, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> preach it, honey. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I had said to them was I said, look, I said, when you think about your day, you're, you're coming home from school and you're thinking about your day. You're thinking, OK, I've got practice and I've got homework and I want to be able to have some time for myself or I want to watch the show. You know, and my chores. Or, and I've got my and chores to time, do. That's yeah. right. And we've got dinner. I said, you you have to put prayer on that list. I said, prayer is an expectation that when you are thinking about your day, your the rest of your day, you include dinner. You include a time to eat. You also must include prayer. Well, I think part of that was the girls have been coming home and hanging out in the kitchen for a good 40 minutes just talking and visiting and I'm like, okay, we're moving on, we're moving on, and I'm trying to drive them forward. And they just have no problem visiting. But when it comes to, okay, it's time for family prayer. Oh, we have so much homework, mom. And I, ha you don't understand. I was at practice. Oh, I or thought I, we were going to watch a show. Oh, we have the and yeah. All the excuses come out. It's like, but you guys were like hanging out in the kitchen for the last hour. That's that just completely. It means nothing <laughs> to them, right? It means nothing to them. So there's a, a really a, there's an effort that we're making to remind the kids that prayer is an expectation, like dinner is an expectation for you. And when you have your commitment to your teams and practices, and you have going to be committed to your homework and to your chores, oh, so also is prayer. Don't think about it as, hmm, I wonder if it's going to happen tonight and I can resist all the way to the, the room where we're going to be praying. So, I don't know why it never really dawned on me to talk about it like that previously, but I think it's a grace and it's a gift. And, and, and that's why we're sharing it today in Sound Insight, that when you can establish family prayer as a habitual ritual. Hey, I like that. Hey. I, I never said that before. See, Facebook. the Holy Spirit is stirring this up. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. A habitual ritual that when it happens like that, then kids are going to recognize that resistance is futile. Yes. You know, resistance is futile that, no, this happens. Dinner happens, homework happens, chores happen. This happens too. You know, another thing I'll say to them, I think you probably heard me give this kind of speech is there's 24 hours in a day. You can have 10 to sleep, give or take. So we have 14 hours 
And in that 14 hours, you can take 40 minutes to 20 minute periods to help clean, to help with your chores, to help serve the family. And you can take another 10 minutes to keep your room clean because I will get that resistance of, oh, I don't have time to unload the dishwasher or, oh, I can't load the dishwasher. But yet they have no problem doing all the other things that they choose to do, want to do. So if you break up the day and say, okay, how much time on Sunday do you want to give to God? You have 14 hours. So we're going to mass. There's one hour. Is that, does that all, is that all he gets? Just one hour? So now you have 13 left. Are those all for you? And when you break it up that way, I think the older kids start to think, oh, and I'm saying this over and over, like they hear it from me every other week. So they actually are starting to say, oh, I can do an hour of chores on Saturday morning. It's not a big deal. So just looking at it differently. And you said something. It actually is bringing up another new insight for me. I think one of the reasons why the kids can hem and haw a little bit is that they don't know how long family prayer is going to take. I would say that, you know, typically the shortest it's going to be is 10 or 15 minutes. But when we do our prayers and we do a rosary, it comes in at around 25 minutes. So somewhere between 15 and 25 minutes. But in addition to that, there is, is everybody in the room ready to go? It's not as if everyone just wanders in and sits down and we're all going to get started. It's like, where's Luciana? Oh, where's Anne Marie? And, and it can, you know, herding cats ends up taking an extra five or 10 minutes. So if the kids are coming to the time of prayer and they're not like convinced everybody's going to be there to start right now, and they don't know what prayer we're going to pray, they don't know how long it's going to be, and they don't know if we're going to like deliver some other kind of mini sermon or message. <laughs> this sounds like a gripe at the family meeting. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm kind of getting inside. What would be the resistance? What would be the resistance? Well, when the kids are saying, I need to get to bed or I need to get to my homework, and I know what it is now. It's they don't recognize that there's actually a fixed starting time and there's going to be a fixed length to it. And ready or not, here we get started. You know, okay, it's going to be from 8.45 to 9.05. That's our prayer time. You better show up. You better be there. And we're going to pray that long. Hmm. That would be easier for them. But because we let it be loose based on, oh, Mary Grace isn't getting back from her practice until 9.15 or we've got to drive so-and-so or, you know, they're, they're working on this. It, so it, there's a lot more like a shifting quality to it. So Carrie, we need to do this. We need to, we need to be a bit more um, helpful to let our kids know beginning and end. Okay. So I, maybe we should try that at dinner time. So folks, you're watching a live experiment what here. Do you mean we'll like say prayer it. after dinner, like stay at the table? No, I, like at dinner, we'll say, hey guys, look at as oh, you map out your schedule, this. we're going to be praying the rosary tonight and we're going to pray it at 830. So do, plan on your other stuff. And at 830, we're starting the rosary. We'll call you at 820 to give you a 10 minute warning, five minute. And then we're starting at 830. We expect you to be there. All right. I think I know what kid can be in charge of that clock. She would keep everybody. <laughs> That's her gift. That Great. is her gift. Because I am not, I am not confined to schedules like that tight, but I do see how it would benefit the older kids. So, Carrie, a little later in the program, we're going to be talking about family identity and family ideals and family culture. There is a sense of this is who we are. This is what it means to be a current. These are the ideals. These are the things we're striving to make real, to enflesh in our family life. And that's going to give rise to an atmosphere, a whole way of sharing life together, a culture. And I want to, I want to bring an application to that that showed up last Saturday, our First Holy Communion of our son, John Luke. But we had a couple of complications. And this is where family identity, family ideals, and family culture were brought to bear. So why don't you tell that story? Oh, well, Anne-Marie is uh, on a volleyball team. Volleyball team from yes. St. Uh, Vincent. Vincent. Yes. Uh, they made the first round of playoffs uh, Thursday night. So the next game, we did not know when it was until Friday afternoon. And it was Saturday at one o'clock, but in Seattle, but our first communion was at 11. At St. Com- Vincent's at Saint in Vincent, Federal yes. Way, so an which hour on and a half. Saturday at noon <laughs> is traffic. not the best time to be driving from Federal Way to North Seattle. So as this came about, in her mind, the CYO playoff game was like the most important thing. And I think we had to recognize that. For her, this was like a once in a lifetime event. And, you know, we're older, we're like, oh, this is going to happen <laughs> a few more times in our life. It's not really that big a deal. But for her, it was everything. And I said, well... Yeah, they've built up to this through the yeah. year. They've been walking together as a team. And so she wants to get a ride with a friend. Well, I think she knew she had to go to the First Communion, but she was just like, how am I going to get there by one o'clock? And I was like, well, 
this is a once in a lifetime event. This is a sacrament. You will be going to this. We are, are going as a family. And then we are going to all go and watch you play. And she's like, I don't want anybody at my game. I don't want you guys coming. Oh, it's going to be embarrassing. Oh, la, la, la. I mean, she really wanted us there, but, well, but she really wanted to say, I don't want you there. Okay, so here's the thing. Think about this. So most people, when they have a first communion, after their first communion mass is over, what do they do? They have a party or they go celebrate. And now here's this other event. So not only is it that... Uh, we're facing, you know, is, is Anne Marie going to be there? Well, no, you're going to be there because it's part of the family. But then the question is, how do we get her there? Well, if we get her there by dividing up the family, well, now how does John Luke feel? Because it's his first communion. And what are we really doing to honor that special moment, which is the most significant moment? Well, and then it was the idea, okay, kids, you had to spend that morning getting dressed up and helping each other get ready and then get to the mass an hour early to get seats and then go be at that mass for an hour and 15 minutes. You all are going to ride in the van <laughs> for 50 <laughs> minutes to go watch a volleyball game. And then we're going to stay in downtown Seattle. And then finally, after that game is over, we're going to finally go out to eat as a family, which is going to push it to closer to three o'clock in the afternoon or later. I think we ended up eating around three thirty in the afternoon. So now it's like, well, how do we feed all the kids? And it was extremely complicated. This was a very complicating factor. Well, I don't even think logistically it was complicated because I could see A, B, C, D, E, but it was walking with the different personalities through that. The little ones, you know, just need a cheese stick and some apple slices and they're good to go until whenever. They'll just tag along. But it was the older personnel, the kids that were older, and trying to get them all on board and do it in a way that was celebrating John Luke. That was the purpose of the, the day. And then but also, also allow their day to be dislodged. Yeah. And just say, come and cheer your sister on in your first communion outfit. Yeah, we went, they went all dressed up because we didn't have time to change, which was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a riot. I mean, just the little logistics because she forgot her volleyball sneakers at home. So I had to zip home after, you know, right after mass and grab the sneakers, run back, family picture, and we are zooming out of there and we're going up the highway to make it to... Uh, the volleyball game, which starts at one. And we had the GPS on to give updates to Anne Marie. And we weren't going to get there at one. We we're going to get there at like 106 or 109. And so we contacted the, the coach. Yeah. And we got there in time. Actually, the other game went long. But you know what? So but, the, the, for me, the beautiful thing was this, was that we had to say to Anne Marie, trust. Anne Marie, just trust us. We are doing what we can to get you where you need to be in the time that fits what is right for our family. And and that's not an easy message for a 13-year-old who's all caught up about, I, I need to get there on time and the game starts at one and I'm gonna, not going to have any time to warm up and I might be far behind it by the time we get there. And so we're texting the coach and the coach is letting us know the game's going a little long. And, and sure enough, it all worked out. It was beautiful. It all worked out. We pulled up. She jumped out. Just as the other game, the kids are pouring out of the gym. She gets in there and she got to warm up just as much as the other kids and was there on time. Well, I think what really showed up for me, Tom, in that whole experience, and I think a lot of listeners can relate to this, is that struggle of the goods. I mean, they are both really great things to do as a family, but and then the personalities and the conflict that came into play with moving that many kids in a direction, directions over a course of time and trying to keep everyone peaceful and harmonious and in a good spirit. And just this is just incredible ground for forming selfless acts. And how do you live on behalf of the ones in front of you, even when, you know, we're not necessarily that mature, <laughs> me included. <laughs> so, well, and there's one other one, just another just little minor complication show can, you know, challenging this was. John Luke's older brother, John Mark, had a baseball game that morning that started at 9.30. Okay, so his game starts at 9.30. First communion's at 11. We have to get to the church at 10. I go, I'm dressed in my suit to when I drop John Mark off, and he doesn't want to miss his baseball game because he's pitching. It's his first game ever where he's going to get to pitch. So I drop him off. I take off. I go get the kids, drive them to the church. I drive back to the game. I watch John Mark pitch. And then I've got to pull him out of the game. I said, Coach, I'm sorry. We have to go. We have a first communion, and we are not going to be late for it. You know, John Mark had to understand that he had to leave the game before the end. 
He had his clothes in the car. He had to get changed in the car. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. I was just like, ah. And so what's the point is that as a family, one of the most important things that you're going to do is to help establish a sense of identity. This is who we are. This is how we live. And we try to live according to these ideals. God is first. We, we express our relationship with God through our Catholic faith. That means things that we do individually and as a family that are about our faith, that takes first place. Whether that means family prayer, whether that means juggling all kinds of complications to make your sports schedules work, we are not going to compromise when it comes to living out our faith. And that is not easy. That's really good, Tom. I really feel like this culture now that we're in today with Sunday sports really challenges families of faith on how do you celebrate well the Lord's Day and how do you maintain that spirit of this is a day of rest, this is a day to set aside for Christ. And I really find that we are kind of stumbling forward trying to figure this out because we still have not entered into the more, um, I don't know, rigorous or competitive sports of kids when they get into the high school years. I mean, we're just beginning and we have all these little kids down the line and it is quite the um, challenge, but I see how it's also an incredible opportunity to teach about faith and priorities. So I began with the song, Love is an Open Door. I, I, I began by singing. Don't sing. I, I, I only sang the refrain, but there's a reason why I sang to the refrain. And it actually is going to point to the principle of you have no idea how important your siblings, your kids are to each other in helping to establish family identity, family ideals, and family culture. So what happened yesterday? Um, Anne Marie, is, Who's she's, 13, in, she's a seventh, seventh grade, grade, and John Mark, who is in third grade, have been for a few months after the movie Frozen came out, they would sing the different songs um, throughout the house, and they were particularly singing no that No one can duet. relate to that, dear. Nobody, nobody, can relate nobody to listening Frozen can relate music. to it. <laughs> so like, it's kind of uh, died down, but the, these two really like to sing the duet, Love is an Open Door. It's a duet in the movie, and it's really sweet and endearing. So none of them wanted to do the talent show. And I was like, you know, those two really like that song. They can sing it well. I was like, why don't you guys do that song? I think it would be so cute. And just knowing which one would say yes first, which one would say no, and just trying to play that up. It worked out great. They said yes, and they signed up um, to do it. So that's what they did last yesterday. Well, and the point that you said to me afterwards, and they they were really cute. Of course, were their parents. Oh, they were so oh, cute. Oh, yeah, so, so gifted. So gifted. Okay, they weren't so much on key, but they were. But it was just so cute to see this young third grade boy with his older sister and all the little kids like, oh, John Martin. And they love, it. All, at St. Vincent, the younger kids just adore the older kids. It's just this beautiful amazing thing that happens in schools that are K through eight is that the older ones take on this kind of motherly, um, fatherly, uh, you know, protective role and they all dote over the little ones. And the little ones just can't get enough of the older. When I say them, I'm not just talking my family. I'm talking all the little kids love all the big kids. It's just so, it's so sweet. So just seeing them up there was just like, oh, okay, okay so sorry. What? I'm just <laughs> reliving. The point is, and that's part of the culture of St. Vincent School. That's part of the ideals. So what you had said afterwards was like spot on. You said, you know what? It was really beautiful because the one would not have done it without the other. For each, the other was a safety net. You know, she wouldn't have done it without him because you're kind of vulnerable. You're kind of out there all by yourself. It's really, it's a very sort of like, exposed position well she know? likes getting on stage i don't think she was shy it's more that she had the the middle school junior high excuse like oh i'm doing this for my younger brother wink yeah. wink <laughs> so whatever it is 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 that she yeah. he was a backstop for her and he definitely would not have done it without her but he really likes cheerleading to him on and, and bringing him up yeah oh, it's just so cute anyhow so what's well, the point of this <laughs> and the point of this is now you know so if we want to create an open door to love god is love and if we want to provide that open door to love for our kids that we need to recognize the power and importance of our kids in each other's lives that you talk about the younger kids looking up to the older kids and the older kids looking up to the looking uh, you know watching over the younger kids there's a lot of that as well when it comes to 
uh, living out uh, faith in a family. It's not just faith in a school. School is a, is a kind of family, but faith is a family. And so the ability to be able to do that uh, or to recognize that and to call upon that you know, I I know that family prayer is so much easier because we have our older kids um, leading the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, now they're not perfect at it, right? But the younger kids are just falling in line oh. because they see the older kids doing it. And you know how younger kids will mimic older kids all day long. Well, it doesn't. It delights my heart so much when I hear my older particular daughter reprimand her little sisters for not behaving at mass or not behaving during family prayer when she's the one I'm probably harping on more than anyone and I hear her like disciplining them like oh I guess she I guess she listens (laughs) and who knew the thing about families Tom what I loved about that volleyball game is this is kind of back to siblings helping siblings is we got there and Marie wasn't in a very good mood and her older sister who is a freshman um, after the first game, which they lost, she went over and kind of reprimanded her because Aunt Mary Grace does play volleyball and said, you have to change your attitude. You need to be positive. You need to bring spirit. You need to bring energy. You are having a negative effect on your team, and you need to change that. And she really laid into her in a way that was, um, I think she had that lecture from you a few times. <laughs> but it was just so cool to see how siblings help siblings and teach and what we're teaching them. Actually, they take in and then they use it later on to um, give back to the younger ones. Okay, so I'm with Carrie Curran. This is Tom. And we are talking a bit about faith and family and fostering a sense of identity and ideals and culture. Culture is that spirit that is existing in your family that just carries it along where there's an unspoken way of living together. That happens when we raise up and strive to live out our ideals and we have a sense of identity. Carrie, one of the times of the year that makes it most difficult for families to do this is the summer. The summer tends to be time off. Well, I think, Tom, what happens in the summer for us and this might happen in your house, is it's a little bit chaotic. Um, There's that whole boredom that might set in with some kids, the extreme emotions, um, because kids don't go to bed at the same time, the rituals, the habits, the routines are all displaced. And so we really try to set up some kind of routine and some kind of schedule that's loose. But I really feel like I'm running a summer camp or I'm the camp counselor or camp director because of the number of kids we have, um, just trying to keep everybody moving forward. And actually, there's just this opportunity, especially when we homeschool, that you have the space to do stuff that's more quote unquote fun, but we're still teaching and we're still forming them and we're still helping them set goals and we're still hoping that they can flourish and grow. It's not just a time to vacate or, you know, take off and hang out, but it's more a time to do things that we typically wouldn't do during the school year. You know, one of the things, one of the ways that I think about it is um, healthy eating. I'm trying to do healthy eating. And one of the things that helps me is having fewer choices. If I have to try to make a decision about what am I going to eat at each meal for every meal of the day, for every day of the week, it's going to get exhausting because I'm going to have to make a good choice. Let's translate that into summertime schedules for kids. If every day you have to stop and say to yourself, what are we going to do today as a family? How are we going to juggle our kids in in the activities that they're going to be spending their time on today? That is going to become completely exhausting and it's going to be like, again, herding cats. Yeah. So what we really do, Tom, is look uh, about a month out, we are looking at different areas in which they want to grow and they want to learn, they want to be challenged in and we do a lot of brainstorming with them so they own it and now I think this is the fourth year where they actually set goals for the summer in five areas and we actually plan different activities and events throughout the summer that we can focus on to accomplish those goals so Carrie what are those five areas because I want to dig into this for our listeners physical so we look at uh, maybe you want to learn how to do a jump overhand jump serve or um, maybe you want to run three five k's maybe you want to swim uh, and drop so it's 15 sports. seconds it's yes like, sports and then eating it, too physical mm-hmm. like healthy eating um, what is healthy eating look like and talk about that and and go to the farmers market and pick out fresh fr- vegetables fresh fruit and try to just incorporate help set the kids up for success yeah. so we just don't we have less of the junk food around put out more healthy snacks those sorts of things 
but it also means saying, okay, how are we going to individually motivate kids to, you know, stay active and, and get healthy or improve their own uh, athletic ability? Well, it's by getting them involved in sports. Well, one sport that we do, uh, it works really well with bigger families is the swim team. And once we get four kids on swim team, all the other kids are free. <laughs> so I'm really gearing up to get six kids on the swim team, but I have two that are holding out on me. And they're just like, oh, I don't know, mom. But what happens is if, if they're not active and busy during that day, um, it just creates, uh, I don't know, disarray, co- conflict. The kids start at, uh, fighting and It just goes sideways. So I'm really trying to bring everybody on board. So this is actually a a point of philosophy. It's called metaphysics, that being manifests itself in form. And form is like any particular thing. It has a structure. And that structure has elements or components to it that work in harmony. You don't just have formless matter, just stuff that floats around. No, everything, if it's going to be true and good and beautiful, it has to have some structure to it. We can apply that concept to a day, having a structure to a day. So I spent five years in the seminary, and they had a program of life. It was a structure. It was imposed on us. And the goal was, well, we know what it looks like to have a a holy seminarian become a priest <laughs> or seminarian to become holy, uh, become a holy priest. And they'd structure your day around the spirit ideals, the identity and the culture that would form a priest. Pray in the morning, etc., mass, spiritual direction and all these other things. So in a certain sense, you help create a program of life on uh, on the course of a week. So the kids know they wake up in the morning, get in the car, go into, go into swim practice, and then after swim practice, tennis practice, right? And off you go. Yeah, uh, I never heard of that. That's, yes, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're trying to wear them out so they sleep at night. That's the real purpose of tennis and swim. Um, the great thing about tennis is you sign four up and the rest of them are only $25 for the month. So again, this big family thing is working to our advantage. Probably the only time it does, but um, yeah. And, and the part of this, Tom, is not just physical, we want them active, but Tennis is a great sport to play as a family. I was looking for things we could do together as a family. So as they get older, we can go away and there's tennis courts everywhere and you just grab a racket and balls and it's just a fun way to interact and celebrate and be together. Uh, A couple of things we do are 5K runs. We'll just sign up for one or two of those during the summer. But it's just how do you create this family identity family culture that you're mentioning and just kind of bring everybody along. Now, of course, everyone doesn't love soccer or everyone doesn't love tennis or swim, whatever it is, but just doing it together um, is a huge gift. And like I said, I have two holdouts. So I'm really trying to think, what can I bribe them with? <laughs> How can I get them to join the swim team? Because I know they will love it. And I know they will So experience. you're actually uh, drawing on the, the wisdom of St. Augustine and St. John of the Cross. Who By bribing? About, they talk about bribing? They do, but they don't use bribing. <laughs> they say how God woos the soul. Oh, okay. God like woos the soul. It's like God says, okay... Uh, here's a good that I want for you, but you're not really drawn to that good. So I'm going to associate it with another good that you are drawn to. So let me have you keep your eye on that good, and that will be a, a, a pre- approached through this other good. So you want the resurrection, it's going to go through the cross. You want to go to the Mariners games and the Sounders, Sounders games? Yes. That's great. You have to go through swim team. Well, I told my <laughs> son, I said, if you really want to go to a few games with Dad and John Mark or bring one of your siblings – We really want you to do swim team, and we really want you to participate just three days a week. You don't have to do all the meets. You don't have to come, but we want you to be a part of what we're doing as a family, and I think he's almost ready to say yes. The other daughter, she wants an iPhone, which she will not be getting an iPhone anytime soon, but I said, how about if I give you my phone for like an hour a day or two hours a day kind of thing? So we're still, neg- have, we're still I in negotiations. Com- <laughs> I have a, com- and my, and my approach to that one is completely different. Mine is, you know what? Look, you you're gonna have to earn your way towards that, and this is uh, this is gonna give you some credit towards that. Not having it, it's gonna count against it. So completely on you. You know, you, so that's my approach. <laughs> well, I don't know how. Yeah, we're gonna have to play both those sides because is it is she? And I know she'll love it. She's so social, and she has friends on the team, and so I think she's just trying to hold out on us. Actually, right, and, and, and assert some <laughs> assert some choice and some and space some to have the freedom, some control. Yeah, yeah, some control over that. 
So now that's just the physical, by yeah, the way. Yeah, just Tom. the physical. We're just talking one about physical. One other point goals. about the physical. So one of my goals for my kids. My secret goal is that they all become like all-star professional athletes and make a whole bunch of money so I, I can do ministry and not have to work uh, otherwise, but just and go to call, uh, scholarships, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but uh, my secondary goal is to be able to give my kids just sort of foundational skills. I want my kids to be able to hit a tennis ball, to be able to swim, to be able to throw a baseball, to be able to swing a bat, to be able to kick a soccer ball, to be able to shoot a basketball, to be able to dribble a ball. I mean, these are sort of like foundational skills to be able to play sports. And for me, it's just like, you don't got to be the all-star. You don't have to be the best at it, but I just want you to be able to engage in the game in a way that you don't feel awkward. You're not going to stand out because it was so easy for me to recognize, wow, that kid has never played any basketball before. And I'm talking about kids my own age when I was growing up. Oh, wow, that kid has never played baseball. Look at how he's throwing the ball. It's so awkward. So for me, just as a guy, I just want my kids to be able to avoid those awkward situations where they're getting involved in sports and just feel like they've got no confidence because they don't know the rules of the game and they don't know just some of the basic skills. Now, don't they teach a lot of that at the junior highs? I thought like in PE now they cover various sports I've not even heard of and they like teach them, they and... teach them the rules <laughs> and I don't know that's so interesting because I grew up with six brothers and so we did all the sports we did tennis and we did soccer and golf and the first time we met do you remember we went to a golfing range we were like 10 people yeah Catholics that were working on their masters and doctorate yeah, we went and played uh putt 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 golf <laughs> or min- and there miniature was you miniature. call it miniature I call it, I call it miniature golf we call it putt putt here but I and saw and we also went to the driving range <laughs> after that yes together oh uh, well I was always attracted to a guy who was athletic I just loved sports I did the female sport athlete of the year at my college I love every sport I want to play it all and I want to watch it and so when I saw you drive that ball I was like oh he can smack those golf balls. <laughs> I was like so impressed because you could hit it like four million. Four mil- yes. You could, as I know, as my brothers all played, and you could drive it farther than any of them. That's what I remember. Yeah, but the, the I'm not, I'm not saying your told. not your game. I know is not very <laughs> accurate, which is important. But you know how it go, drive for show, putt for dough. You did, yeah. <laughs> you I, quite I've never heard that before, dear. That's what I am not a golfer. I'm a driving range duffer. I yeah, just well, see fun. how hard I can swing that club. Well, and, it's half the fun. But yeah. it, I just know that um, kids knowing different sports and just being able to be comfortable is an important thing. Yeah, comfortable, not awkward, confident, right? Not feeling like I have to shy away. That that's an important that's an important way that we set up our kids for success in life. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you also have helped work with our kids on structuring out some activities associated with spiritual. Um, Well, spiritual really, this is, you know, this is really going to go into another program. Spiritually, there is just more opportunity to do things like let's go to adoration Wednesday night. Let's take time and go to a chapel. Let's take time and read this particular saint book or why don't we go to mass with grandma who loves to go to mass every monday at one o'clock at the hospital where it's five minutes from our house um but just there's just more space to take in god how about let's go on a hike to the waterfall so you can do two you're hiking and you're talking about faith and you're seeing the beauty of god's creation and you're just letting that which is beautiful, especially in the Northwest, shine through and just water your soul, water their souls, water our souls. I know one of the things, Carrie, that um, you have also, again, been really good about saying, Tom, let's be intentional about this, is let's not just go away for a vacation, again, where you're going to vacate. Let's do something that will help foster our vocation and, and that of our kids. So we took a trip to Leavenworth a couple of years ago and you said, let's make it a family retreat. Let's raise it up in the eyes of the kids. It's not, oh, we're going to get away for, you know, some, you know, some, uh, right, you know, slaying, you know, yeah. riding in the snow or walking around town or just get away from the busyness of home and relax. vacation and yes. watch movies and all of that. No, the vision, the overall structure, again, that structure of it was we're going to go spend time together as a family on retreat and then from there, we can incorporate in the other things. But the overarching vision was, this is a, a family getaway where we're going to do things associated with God. Well, I think it's evolved from that in that now we just find family retreats to go on and let someone else do all the cooking, <laughs> <laughs> do all the activities, and we participate. So we've done the Family of Nazarenes, the retreat 
Nights for a couple of years. Yep, Last year, that. that's right. We and did we Faith did... on Fire, and yep. I think we did one other thing. And then, well, this summer, we are going to Camp Hamilton to do the family retreat that they offer. It's just a weekend, but my girls love Camp Hamilton. I mean, they just have had an amazing experience there, and it really just helps our kids say, okay, these are the values that my mom and dad have. This is what we're immersed in. And then they get it spoken to them by college kids that go to Gonzaga or Franciscan and that love Jesus. And so they're like, oh, my mom and dad aren't as crazy as I thought they were. (laughs) And it gets um, re-established from other adults that they look to. And that's just so powerful because my kids will come back and tell me, share the testimonies they've heard and just how wow, those experiences were for them. I just like, oh, this is awesome. I love this. And I know Camp Hamilton um, offers lots of scholarships. So if you are a family and you want to do the family weekend and you just want to take a couple of kids and let them cook for you and plan the activities and attend the mass and meet other great Catholic families, I think you should try it. Hey, do you think we'll get a discount if I ask Casey? (laughs) I promoted it. No, but um, no, it's just a great thing that the the diocese offers. And not just Camp Hamilton. I mean, you can go on other family retreats through other venues, but this is just what we are doing this year and we've never done it. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. And that website, seattlearchdiocese.org, seattlearchdiocese.org. That becomes a great opportunity. You can go there and just look for the CYO camps. The CYO is its own tab. And then it can easily lead you to the different uh, camp opportunities. So we, and again, that's something that Carrie, you've teed up, you know, a couple of months ago, like where are we going this summer? What camps are you kids going to go to? And make sure you can talk to your friends to make sure your friends can also accompany you. Cause it's like the, you know, love is an open door, right? It'll be an open door for the kids. If they like, are, I'm going to be all by myself. Kids are going to be awkward. What if I don't like anybody? All that sort of stuff. That all just disappears when you're going with a friend. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is our kids have to help pay their way on to camp. They don't, we don't just write a check for them. So part of our family system is them earning money. They're home, we have home economy and allowance. So they have to actually, um, they need a couple of months to save money to be able to afford it. (laughs) So So. those of you, I know that um, there is a number of folks listening and they take bigger vacations. And I'm going to say this, when you take a bigger vacation, like you're going to New York City, or maybe you're going to Europe or Hawaii. Or California. California, right. Include in your own uh, planning for the time that you're going to be away. Ask yourself, is there a shrine? Is there some pilgrim destination? Is there a, a special church to go to? Is there, you know, a special site to visit? Yeah, I know with our kids, um, this is something we've done for every year for the last six years is just to really establish a sense of unity and identity and belonging. I take the girls away for an overnight or two nights. And last year we went to Portland and visited the the grotto there and just spent time there in that, that space and just took in that part of um, what that area had to offer. And it was just beautiful to be able to do that and also... Um, if you can go away for an overnight, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can go camping, you can exchange houses with a sister or go to grandma's, but just to take time to think, how is this time going to be unique and special and not just the typical vacation? We, at the end of every school year, just to really celebrate that year, will um, to do a mother-daughter time away. And we go through and answer questions like, What was your best moment from this year? What was something embarrassing that happened? What were you most proud of? What did you do this year that you've never done before? Like maybe they tried a new sport or a new instrument or they did a talent show. Um, What's something that you were really afraid of or made you sad? And we have this list of questions. I know it sounds goofy, but I have these for the last six years and they are so precious. And my girls really look forward to just our time as family away and just loving each other. And I don't lead this weekend. My girls have, I have very strong older girls. They kind of step in and now are in charge and tell me what we're doing and where we're going. And, and it's just a beautiful um, time that we're, we're creating these relationships that will last forever. And it's just, it's powerful. I can't wait. Well, and my boys are saying, Dad, (laughs) (laughs) how come we never do any boys weekend away? Dad, that's what's dad. Mom gets the girls. How come the boys are never doing this? And I feel so bad. Uh, And I don't want people to feel like they have to go do all this stuff. It's just that's my personality. I know that God gives people differently, but just to really think intentionally about this time. Well, and, and the principle theologically is that events are moments of encounter. So then when you're doing something that's out of the ordinary, that's what an event is. An event is non-ordinary time. 
and there's an opportunity for a breaking in, a breaking open, a breaking through. And when you're doing that intentionally and involving God, God does show up and break in in, sp- in powerful ways. Well, Carrie, we are going to have to break up this conversation because we're out of time. Can we finish this next week? The yeah, rest yeah, of yeah. these? Maybe we'll I even feel uh, bad. do it early in the week. Thanks so much for joining okay. us. Hey, God bless you and have a great month of May.